Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. Um, I intend to keep this one relatively short. What actually ends up happening, of course, is uh, your guess being as good as mine. But um, let's see what I can do here. The subject that I want to dive into is the subject of hypocrisy, an interesting dichotomy. And um, this post by Crimson Falk on DeviantArt, that's uh, Crimson Falk, F-A-L-K-E, dot deviantart.com. Um, JB offers feminist sippy cups and cookies. Um, though some of you may or may not be tempted to dive this into a debate about feminism or whatever else. That's really not what I'm wanting to touch on. Um, this has simply inspired a derivative here. So I'm going to read uh, this article to you and obviously show you on screen. And it's my reply to this article that is the point that I'm wanting to make as far as the dichotomy of hypocrisy. <clears throat> Alrighty. Once again, Judge Bitchy has given it to the feminists. Seriously, it's like making women into competent and reasonable adults is like the plague to these idiots. As an outspoken critic of feminism, I have quite a bit of experience interacting both online and IRL, although I, I will note that online is actually a part of real life. The internet exists in real life. People talk for real on the internet. Actual real life business is conducted via the internet. <laughs> I really hate the term IRL versus online as if they're two separate things no that, that that would be like saying if you if you go hang out at a karaoke bar that that karaoke bar isn't an aspect of real life because well you know singing karaoke is just songs and songs are like stories and stories aren't real and blah i i just freaking hate that anyway <laughs> um with feminists who tend to not even take the mildest criticism of their ideology kindly. The recent events at the Calgary Expo, where an... This is one of those not so commonly used words I don't know how to pronounce. A-N-O-D-Y-N-E. An Odin something? I don't know. I mean, I consider myself a fairly articulate person, but that still, that one shoot over my head. Uh, critique of feminism as too eager to embrace victimhood resulted in a female comic book creator and her colleagues being banned for life from all expos across Canada, run by those particular organizers offers proof that feminists cannot tolerate the slightest critique of their ideology. But as Tyrion Lannister observed, oh, Tyrion Lannister, yes, from Game of Thrones. Interesting synchronicity. And a very awesome um, show, by the way. Uh, I was told that um, Game of Thrones is like a psychological, you know, guide or handbook to understanding the globalist elites, and my god, I have not as of yet been disappointed. Anyway, as Tyrion Lannister observed, when you tear out a man's tongue, you are not proving him a liar, you're only telling the world that you fear what he might say. Here are seven critiques in particular feminists hate hearing and fight to silence. And um, the first four 
are listed. And for this hangout, we are not going to read more at the original article post. We're just going to leave this as it is. <clears throat> but if you want to go to this journal and read that for yourself, you're more than welcome to. One. Feminists say one thing and do another. Feminists absolutely hate when you point to evidence of feminists actively, enthusiastically opposing equality. Now, opposes shared parenting? LOL. Feminists believe in equality. Hillary says w women are the primary victims of war, all while women are still protected from the draft giggles feminism is about equality it's okay to cut the cut to the genitals of babies as long as the babies are male tee -hee. it's not totally the same thing they will hold they will hold the dictionary in one hand and stuff cotton wool in their ears with the other while screaming la 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 i can't hear you and then suggest you fuck off which is always charming two women are just as if not more violent than men fact men on average are bigger and stronger than women fact women who get into physical fights with men tend to get the shitty end of the stick fact the Violence Against Women Act uses a set of standards to evaluate domestic violence that almost always result in the man being arrested, no matter who started it. All these things can be true and still not foreclose the reality that women are, on average, more violent than men. They overwhelming tend to prefer beating up and even killing children who can't fight back but they don't really hold back when it comes to beating on men either remember the feminist writers and editors at jezebel who gleefully recounted beating up their boyfriends 70 percent of domestic violence in which only one person throws a punch is carried out by a woman Men allow women to hit them because they know if they fight back, they will be the ones arrested, charged, and jailed. Three, there is institutional sexism against men. It is an oft-repeated truism that one cannot be sexist against men because there are no institutional forces that discriminate against men for no reason other than they are men, but related to the above, if legal discrimination vis-a-vis -vis domestic violence is not institutional discrimination, what is? Men are far more likely to be charged, convicted, and jailed at disproportionate longer rates for the exact same offense than women. If the criminal code and its application are not institutional powers, what is? Schools discriminate, discriminate against boys and some girls by forcing them to take psychotropic medications to participate in female-centric education. The Board of Education is not an institutional power. Men's health care is globally underfunded. The World Health Organization is not a global institutional power. In their relentless quest to pursue the cult of victimhood, the edges of the known uh, pursue the cult of victimhood, the edges of the known universe, feminists will deny that men face institutional biases that make sexism not only possible but inevitable. Four, most feminists haven't read any feminist theory and have no idea what they're talking about. As the recipient of an undergraduate degree in film theory, women's studies and cultural Marxism by self, uh, stealth, oh, by stealth, I am extremely well read in most feminist literature. I have read the older misandrist feminists like 
Dworkin and Mackinnon, and of course were assigned the Scum Manifesto to read when we studied Andy Warhol, his films suck, don't bother. For those unaware, Sol Anna's shot Warhol as a feminist statement. I have read modern feminists like Gill <laughs> Gilligan, Flax, and Haraway, and I've even waded through the unintelligible gibberish a Butler Iringere and Kristeva. In fact, Kristeva was the keynote speaker at my graduation, and she nearly caused a medical emergency when the entire cohort lapsed into a coma listening to her. Fashionable nonsense. Kidding, obviously. But damn, she was boring and she droned on forever. I have yet to meet a feminist who can coherently discuss any one of those theories or theorists or the many, many others I slogged my way through. Ask a feminist to debate feminism and you will get told to go fuck yourself. Okay, so now let's scroll down to my reply here where I am just discussing the dichotomy of hypocrisy. <clears throat> So here's what I have to say about it. Because of the current societal meme that has been perpetuated for decades, if not longer, yeah, obviously a lot longer, but I was just trying to keep things as short-winded as I could. It is very difficult for humans to face their own hypocrisy. Whether you're talking about feminists, truthers, new agers, or pick pretty much anything you want to pick, all forms of hypocrisy have the same core foundation. Number one, the belief that making a mistake is something that makes a person weak and unworthy in the best case or criminal and evil in the worst case. This brings about the neurosis of being right and correct, being supposedly more important than facing truth. The truth about mistakes is, they are a part of the natural process of learning and they are not bad or wrong. They only lead to dysfunction when they are perceived as bad or wrong. So instead of learning from mistakes and learning how to not repeat them, we go into a state of denial and willful complacent ignorance, which is inevitably hypocritical in nature. Two, our addiction to feeling justified, which requires the blame game. This means that in order to be the good guy, you must also be the victim of a bad guy. There is no room in this paradigm for the understanding, or <clears throat> excuse me, no room in this paradigm for the idea of understanding how problems come about so that we can learn to fix them. It's all about blame and dick wagging. This is the foundation of arrogance, and arrogance has a huge blind spot. Number three, the illusions of superiority and inferiority. Nothing and no one is superior to nor inferior to anything or anyone else. Everything in nature has its place. The cell may be small. But without cells, you could not have tissue, and thus no organ systems, and thus no humans or animals. There is diversity and uniqueness in nature. Nothing better or worse, but all connected in a natural symbiotic web. When we forget this, and we fuck with that web, it creates massive problems. Just as monoculture within agriculture has helped screw the environment pretty royal. Diversities of plants need to coexist in order to form a functional ecosystem. There's plenty of food plants that can do this. So something called a food forest is currently being developed to add diversity to farming. So the illusions of superiority and inferiority create imbalance and imbalance fucks everything up. 
emotionally, psychologically, biologically, ecologically, and in every other possible way. This illusion is the cornerstone of all prejudice, also known as having one's head up one's ass. Number four, individualism versus collectivism. These are two sides of one coin that balance out when they are two sides of one coin. But when we think they are whole other universes that are at odds with each other, this creates a massive problem. Those who are for individualism always end up becoming collectivist because they begin to view their own sense of individuality as the only valid expression of individuality and then try to conform everyone else to be like they are. Conformity is collectivism. Those who try to embrace individualism usually end up unwittingly being posers. I'm different, <clears throat> like everyone else. <clears throat> so collectivist memes start popping up based on pseudo-individualism. Number five, the dichotomy of the body is dirty, sexuality is evil. This makes all forms of creative expression to be labeled as a fetish. And then the duality opposition comes in and we're taught that we have to either be in support of a fetish or against a fetish. A fetish takes a valid form of expression and makes it into a twisted, narrow-minded obsession. It also completely ignores any other form of the expression as being a valid perspective. A person who views everyone and everything as perverted is in fact the pervert and their denial is pervasive. So I can't really judge these people too harshly lest I risk becoming a hypocrite myself, but it's always fun to point out the elephants in the room. People get so butthurt, be they feminists or any other group that is easily butthurt. Oh, where is Richard Hamilton's Darth Vader voice when I need it? <sighs> the butthurt is strong with this one. Yeah, that's, that's also why I'm really, it's not about, for me, it's not about necessarily being an individual so much as it is being authentic. You know, because obviously there's a difference. Obviously, being authentic by default is one expression of individualism but if you leave out that authenticity then the idea of individualism just becomes another freaking meme you know like oh i'm gonna be an individual because everyone else is doing it and i want to conform into a collectivist meme oh yeah i need to be an individual uh -huh. you know you could look up um monty python um i think the clip is called the church of brian or something where you know there's this this guy up there that's like you are all individuals and the crowd says yes we are all individuals and like you know this guy is trying to encourage critical thinking and all these all the masses are doing is just you know nodding and agreeing and you know just repeating everything he's saying and this guy is like freaking face palming himself like oh man how am i ever gonna get through to these people so that's you know kind of like the society we're living in right now so you know that's why you see all these you know, so-called professionals and gurus and people like that. And like, oh, I need to go learn to be an individual. And there's gurus that teach you how to be an individual. And individualism is cool. Being different is cool. And everyone is doing it. So I need to conform to that cool meme that everyone is doing. Otherwise, I won't be accepted into the conformist, Naziistic society. Oh, yeah gotta call bullshit on that one total hypocrisy but yeah so only when we can you know look at ourselves and our own inner bullshit and you know understand what hypocrisy really is understand what denial really is understand what all these things really are and then instead of looking outward and going oh i'm gonna look for it all out there and point my finger at it and go naughty naughty fuck y'all look inward first
if you want to recognize it better outside of you, get to know it inside of you first. Because we've all got it. We've all been programmed with it. And it's a heck of a process to deprogram yourself. But you're not going to start that process if you're in denial going, oh, no, I'm too smart. I'm too enlightened. I'm above it all. It's all these other sheep out there that are programmed. No, no, not me i can do no wrong well anyone talking like that has just proven that they are programmed worse than any sheep because their denial is pervasive and they're using their so-called awakening or so-called enlightenment or so-called self-help or so-called whatever to point the finger outward and go oh there's nothing wrong with me there's just something wrong with all of you oh yeah i'm great you all suck no that's that's bullshit that's total hypocritical bullshit so when we can learn to recognize these things and clear these things out within ourselves, then we will better be able to recognize it on the external and more importantly, to understand it when we recognize it. Because just recognizing it isn't enough. I mean, you could recognize a freaking jet plane, but that doesn't mean you know how to fly the thing, you know? Just because you look up and go, oh, look, it's a jet plane. I know what that is. Doesn't mean you can get into the cockpit and fly the fucking thing. That requires a knowledge and an understanding and, you know, practicing on flight simulators till you get, you know, good enough to go for your pilot's license and, you know, so on and so forth. There's a whole educational process to be gone through to really understand planes well enough to fly them. Just looking up in the air and knowing, oh, that's a fucking plane, I see that. <laughs> That's, that doesn't get you pilot's license, my friend. So just knowing that there are problems in the world and knowing that there are certain basic ways that we might be able to fix them and just, you know, knowing that, you know, the 1% one, 1 of the population, the so-called elites, are criminals running the world and understanding how law works and, you know, corporations and, you know, just having these little tidbits of knowledge alone does not really mean that you really have the full understanding and that you're just so awake and so aware and blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, if you're standing up there like, oh, I'm awake and I'm aware and I'm better than all of you, so fuck you if you disagree with me, motherfucker, then that means you're more asleep than, than the most asleep fucking sheep out there. Like, take the dumbest, most asleep son of a bitch you can find and point to. You are more asleep than them if you're sitting up there on your high, arrogant horse going, I'm William Black and I'm going to wag my dick in your face because I'm so professional. Well, as Vinny Eastwood once said about professionals, he said, Some people like to say I'm not very professional, but if you look around, the world is run by professionals. How's that working out for you? So, okay, I'm sure I totally, like, fucked up his accent there, but whatever. <laughs> no disrespect meant to Vinny. But, yeah. If you check out the uh, PSEC episode where I where I interviewed um, Vinny Eastwood and, and Max Egan, you know, you can hear Vinny rant all about these sorts of topics. My God, we definitely go into the into the hypocrisy stuff pretty good. So yeah, anyway, I think I've said all I want to say about that. So hopefully uh, this little presentation has helped somebody out there or at least pissed off somebody out there enough that it's brought you know maybe a little bit of you know awakening to their mind or as um <laughs> as Vinny also explained um about the cosmic schmuck he said if you ask yourself my god am i the cosmic schmuck am i maybe doing everything all wrong if you can ask yourself that then you're probably not the cosmic schmuck but if you're the person sitting there going, oh, oh, I could never be the cosmic schmuck. I've got everything right. I've got all my shit together. I could do no wrong. Then you probably are the cosmic schmuck. So, anyway, I hope everybody has been sufficiently uh, inspired, entertained, uh, pissed off, whatever floats your boat. Whether you love it or hate it, hopefully it uh, got the hamster wheel turning in your head made you think a little so 
Um, with that, I'm going to sign off. Catch y'all later.